What's going on, YouTube? It cannot be denied that the Raptor is one of the coolest and craziest trucks that money can buy, which is why we always make a point to review the latest version every year. That's what we're doing today at Jack King and Ford. And of course, we do want to especially thank them for giving us access to this Raptor. And if you're in the market for any new Ford, we encourage you to stop by their dealership or visit them via their website, which we provided a link to in the video description. So with that all said, let's see if the Raptor is still the ultimate performance truck. So kicking things off here with our exterior design. This is certainly the main reason for the Raptor's success outside of its capabilities. It continues to look very wide and menacing, with a huge Ford grill and the legally required clearance lamps since it is over 7 feet wide. The Raptor also has different full LED headlights from the regular F-150 model, with a very intricate cube design that is surrounded by a continuous accent light. The bumper, of course, is also unique, with a big hole to view the shocks. Now, as far as the other parts of the design, they didn't change this year, so you continue to have super cab and super crew configurations, plus always a 5.5 foot bed. In the back, all but the base model get the cool Ford branding across the back. And all but the base model will also have the LED tail lights, which is new to the 801A for 2020. Finally, rounding off the design are dual exhaust outlets, which deliver the Raptor's unique exhaust note. So overall, like I said last year and the year before, this is certainly still the coolest looking truck straight from the factory. Now looks aside, the Raptor backs things up with extreme capability. Last year, the signature Fox shocks added the new live valve abilities, which allows it to continuously be able to make adjustments to the compression rate within milliseconds. And that's good for both on and off-road situations. The actual travel of the shocks is an incredible 13 inches in the front and 13.9 inches in the rear. And then your total ground clearance is 11 and a half inches. Checking out the wheels, they will always be 17 inches with a couple different design options. And as far as the tires, they are BF Goodrich all-terrain tires which were specifically designed for Raptor duty. Now moving on to the safety features, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert and lane keeping assist are newly standard to the 801A this year. And all the models get automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection and auto high beam headlights. And then finally, the last thing I want to talk about on the outside is the tailgate. If you go for the 802A, it will be remote releasing and easy lowering, whereas this one, as you can see, is not. In addition to the regular LED lighting and accessory hooks, our model has the optional tailgate step to make getting in super easy. But anyways guys, that's it for the outside stuff. So now let's check out the interior before we most importantly take it out for a drive. So on the 2020 Raptor, um, you will have to go up to the 802A to get the smart entry system. All the rest of the models will come with this regular keyless entry fob as well as the switchblade key. Um, remote start does also come on the 802A package or on this model with the 80, 801A, uh, you can option it on as a standalone option. So of course to get inside the vehicle, we're just going to press unlock. 
You do also have the security code uh, numbers on there as well if you want to use that instead. All right, so taking a look inside our 2020 Raptor interior. Um, as you can see, nothing has really changed this year um, since it was refreshed just last year. Now, as far as your interior color options, you have the Henry Ford selection between black or black, um, but you can get blue contrast stitching if you prefer that. And then as far as your materials, you're looking at cloth seating on the base model and it upgrades to leather once you go up to the 801A package. Turning over here to your door trim, it is typical F-150. So you have a nice leather padded armrest, and, but this area here will be hard touch unless you go for the 802A package. As far as your windows, they are one touch automatic for the driver and the passenger, and you could get three person memory seating if you went for the 802A. Then as far as your seats, all but the very base model will come with this 10 way power adjusting seat with two way lumbar support. Then like I said, we do have the leather seating here on this model. Um, very attractive uh, seat design. I love this uh, cloth pattern here with the kind of like diamonds in it and then the embroidered Raptor badging. Now this is a pretty tall truck, of course, being an off-road focused vehicle, um, but Ford makes it super easy to get inside because they have these really cool metal running boards that are very, very wide. And you do have a driver's license grip as well. Now all the previous Raptors we reviewed, they were the high-end 802A package. Um, so I can definitely point out some of the things that change if you go for a lower-end Raptor here. So on this 801A as well as the 800A, um, you will notice a kind of a decrease in material quality. So this upper part of the dashboard, this is going to be a hard touch plastic instead of the soft touch plastic with stitching um, that you'll get on the 802A. Um, but then as far as all this stuff here, down here, this is all the same, so you still have this silver painted plastic, um, as well as this kind of textured looking faux aluminum trim. And everything does fit together, you know, in the typical good quality F-150 way. Now to start up this model, we actually have a physical key, which is becoming kind of rare these days in cars we reveal. So of course, just stick it in and twist it. Now as far as your gauges here, there are two different versions for the Raptor. This is the standard version which comes with the smaller 4.2 inch display and the kind of analog gauges across the top there. Um, or you can get the 7 inch display which makes this whole area digital. Um, but as far as the actual capability, both of these have a lot of really detailed information. So as you can see, you have access to all this information, very specific stuff. So you can see while you're, you know, off-roading, keep track of exactly all the vital signs. You also have your um, different towing options as well as some off-road status stuff. Um, so very, very detailed information and a lot of specific stuff for the Raptor. Now coming back to the steering wheel, you have this really, really nice meaty steering wheel. Um, of course it is leather wrapped. You have these big bolsters as well as the marking for the center. Um, and then, as far as my favorite part, is on all the Raptors you have these really large magnesium paddle shifters. These are some of the nicest paddle shifters in any vehicle. They just feel fantastic. As far as the steering wheel itself, it's going to be manual tilt and telescoping until you go up for the 802A, and that also goes for heating as well. Now additionally, we've got the power adjusting pedals. That actually starts on the 801A package. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about storage. This is an F-150, of course, so you're going to have a ton of it. So opening up the center console, you've got this sliding tray, this does remove, and then you have all of this storage, absolutely a massive amount of space. Additionally, you get your two cup holders, this little slot, you can slide this forward here to reveal another really large and deep bin. This is where you'll find your USB ports. And of course, you've got still storage along the sides here, in the door trim, up top there, and there. So just like every F-150, 
it's gonna be really hard to run out of space. As far as your shifter, this is just pure F-150. Um, like I already said, you do have a manual mode. You can shift with these little toggles or you can use those magnesium paddle shifters. And then when we head into reverse, you will find a standard backup camera on most of the models with active trajectory as well as parking sensors in the back. Um, however, there is a 360 degree camera which comes on the 802A package. Now heading on past that, we come to our climate controls. This is the manual setup. This comes on both the base model and the 801A. You can get a dual zone automatic if you go for the 802A. Um, and of course, this is super simple. You just adjust your fan speed and heat right there. Um, we also have the three-stage seat heating that starts on the 801A. And then if you go for the 802A, you'll also have three-stage seat ventilation. And up here we've got a control for our four-wheel drive. Um, we also have this blank spot here. This is where you can add features like the trailer brake controller as well as the um, trailer assist that comes on the 802A once again. On the other side here we have a 12-volt outlet as well as a household style outlet. Now if you're sensing a pattern here, a lot of equipment is on the 802A package because it is substantially more expensive than either the 800 or the 801A package. So that's also going to go for the audio system. We've got the standard audio system. However, there is a Bang & Olufsen sound system if you go for that 802A. But we'll go ahead and sample the standard version. I have to say, sound quality of this system is actually pretty good, um, and definitely for the average person, that's going to be more than enough. Alright, so now we are here at our 8 inch sync display. Um, this is standard equipment on all the models, um, and we'll go ahead and take a quick look. There's nothing specifically different about it this year, or different from other Ford and F-150 models. And what I'll just point out is you've got your same shortcut buttons along the bottom. You will always have standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. This specific model has optioned for the optional navigation. So this is your integrated navigation system and it does, you know, have nice graphics and respond nicely to touch. But yeah, I won't waste a whole bunch of your time on this system in this video. Um, however, as always, if you want to learn more about the Sync 3 system, we have a dedicated tech help video and a link to that is going to be in the description. Now moving on up here, we do have an auto dimming mirror. Um, we do not have the Homelink Universal Remotes. Those come on the 802A. And then once we get up here, you'll notice there's a lot of buttons up here. So what I'll start out with first is gonna be our probably our most impressive feature. And that's the twin panel moonroof. That's an option here on this 801A model. And as you can see, very, very impressive. It covers basically the entire roof of this truck and this front panel does fully open up. Now, as far as your other buttons, this one right here is for your power rear window. Um, and then one of the other cool things I really like about the Raptor is that they build in this customizability in the future. So you have all these power controls. So you can hook up different accessories after you buy this truck and add them later on. And then these will power those. So you can just flip these and turn on like external lights and stuff like that. So it's really cool that Ford goes ahead and builds it for that later on customizability. But anyways, that is going to be it for the front areas here in the 2020 Raptor. So now I'll go ahead and hand it off to Mason to check out the back seats. Now turning and looking at the Raptor's rear door trim, uh, it is all hard touch on this model, but if you want the more premium materials, you can get that in the 802A group. Um, but as far as actually the storage itself, uh, we do have a storage bin here, down here, and a bottle holder. And getting in is quite easy. You have the running board, assist grip. Yeah, 
And in terms of rear amenities, this Raptor, even though this is just the 801A, still does come nicely equipped. Uh, so we do have cup holders up top. Down below we have some vents, as well as a lot of different outlets. So you do have uh, two smart charging USB ports, a regular household style outlet, in addition to a 12 volt power outlet. So everyone should be able to keep all of their stuff charged up in the back seat of this Raptor. And I do also want to mention if you want the heated rear seats, uh, that is an option on the higher end models. In the center, we do have a fold down armrest. It does have cup holders in the end. And up top, of course, you do have your panoramic moonroof, some LED lighting, a coat hook. But more importantly, let's go ahead and talk about the space. Uh, so obviously this is the Super Crew version, uh, which means it's the full four-door setup. Now you can get the Super Cab if you want. Um, of, of course, that's going to have a lot less space here in the rear seat. Um, but as far as the Super Crew itself is concerned, um, we have 44 inches of rear legroom, which is absolutely massive. Uh, behind rear seating position, I have about at least a foot and a half of space between my knees and the seat back and my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. So you are definitely going to be comfortable back here. Uh, this is honestly as spacious as it gets in any car's rear seat. Uh, so everyone will definitely be happy in the rear seat of this Raptor Super Crew. Now turning and looking at the seat's functionality itself, uh, it actually is very usable. Of course, this is an F-150 after all. So all you have to do is just yank on it, and then it will uh, fold up, allowing you to fit pretty much anything you want in this uh, rear area. Uh, you can fit a bicycle, lawnmower, anything that you need, uh, maybe to protect it from the rain if it's raining. And in order to let it back down, just grab this little strap. And then it's kind of hard to do with uh, one hand, but just fold it back down. And in addition to that, you can also fold the seat back like this. Turning over to the seat it is 10-way power adjusting, just like the driver's seat on the 801 and 802A. And from the passenger, you have this little storage compartment. Down below that, we do have a dampened glove box. Uh, it's a little bit narrow, but it does go back a little bit, a uh, pretty good distance. And up top, we do have a sun visor. If I can get the uh, mirror over <laughs> open here, uh, and as well as some LED lighting and a mirror. And it does also detach as well as extend. Well guys, that pretty much sums up all the practical stuff about this 2020 Raptor. So now let's go ahead and get to the part that I'm really excited about, the test drive. shocking every time. I mean, it's something that's not going to grow old. This thing is powerful. I absolutely love it. So, of course, as far as the specs, we're looking at the same engine here in 2020. That's going to be the 3.5 liter high-performance twin-turbo EcoBoost V6. Uh, producing 450 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. And you can definitely feel it. This thing scoots. just doesn't make sense. I mean, that's kind of the best way I can describe how it feels to, you know, ride along in one of these. 
when you push the accelerator and you actually just go that fast, it's like, what is going on here? There's no way something this big can accelerate that fast. And speaking of which, the technical 0 to 60 uh, measure by Ford is 5.1 seconds. Um, so obviously that's a very fast figure for something this gigantic. And while we're here at highway speeds going around 55 or 60, I do want to talk. Um, I'm very impressed. I have to say I'm very, very impressed. I don't know if we've ever taken a Raptor out in the highway kind of like this, uh, just at how great this car rides, or this truck. You know, honestly, I was expecting maybe a little bit of a downgrade from a Platinum F-150, but I'm really not feeling it here. Um, it is super duper smooth, and those springs really do help. Um, I guess, I mean, they're off-road springs, so they're very bouncy, but it really does help in your ride quality. You have a super duper comfortable ride in here, and it's also very quiet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, with the tires and the springs, there's a, like a little bit of like a vibration, but as far as when you hit the bumps, like he was saying, it totally smooth. And there's really not a lot of tire noise. Right, it is very quiet in here. Now as far as the transmission, what we've got is a 10 speed automatic transmission. And I'm sure as you can hear so far throughout this drive, it absolutely fires the shifts off like a machine gun. It is extremely fast. Um, they actually have like a little readout right here um, that tells you what gear you're in out of the 10 even when you're in automatic mode. And uh, honestly, if I wasn't looking at it, I would not be able to tell like what gear we're in or anything like that because it is very, very, very fast. We're actually in uh, the eighth gear right now, just cruising Going along like here at 30 miles an hour. So, um, so if that gives you a little idea, it does shift a lot, yeah. but it's not really intrusive or anything because you don't feel anything. You know, it just, like I said, it's just shifting so fast. You can do some manual shifting and see how that goes. Seems weird for in a big truck, but we have <laughs> giant magnesium paddle shifters, so let's shift manually. experience is just so yeah. much fun I mean if you buy this truck you're gonna have so much fun that's all I can say like shifting with paddle shifters I mean what the heck no one else does that I've got metal awesome full-size paddle shifters uh, and the truck actually responds like to what you're doing very quickly I mean it's a legitimate paddle shifting experience and it's actually fun I mean you already know it's fast so You know, we've been talking a lot about the performance of this truck, um, but what we haven't really touched on is its capability. Um, of course, this truck is really an off-road beast, um, so of course you're going to come standard with full-time four-wheel drive, but it's not just any uh, four-wheel drive setup, so it does have some special stuff with it. Um, so basically it is a full-time setup with six different drive modes and electronic locking rear differential. And I do also want to point out that a 410 Torsen Limited Slip front differential is available in the 802A package. So we are going to be missing out on that with this 801A. Uh, but if you want to go for that top end model, you will get that as well. The truck really just gives you the sensation of being the king of the road. As far as the way you set up and the wideness of it, it feels a lot like um, like the heavy-duty trucks that we drove earlier in the year, 
Um, that's the only thing that can be kind of yeah. equivalent to it. You're much higher than you are in a normal F-150. This is super wide. It's so wide, of course, as you probably know by now, you that's they're legally required to put those clearance lamps on in the front. Um, so, you know, that's probably the one vice of this truck off-road is that it's never going to be something that you can take into really tight areas. You're going to have to use something smaller for that. Um, the biggest strength of this, though, is like going off in the desert and stuff like that. Yeah. There's nothing really better, no better option available than this because they could the travel on the suspension is absolutely enormous and you've probably seen all the airborne oh, YouTube yeah. videos going over sand dunes and stuff. We can't do that today, obviously, but... Um, maybe one day. <laughs> yeah, maybe one day, but definitely a lot of fun. And going back to the uh, wideness aspect of it, I do kind of want to point on the uh, touch on this. I honestly, this is probably the widest car that we've been in and I can feel that. I mean. I feel like almost like three or four feet away from Drew and it's kind of weird to be riding in the passenger seat and you can like the center console is massive and then I'm all the way over here it almost feels like you're a little bit removed from uh, the front seat so I mean maybe if you don't like the person over there then that's we're never gonna touch each other to no I know you'd have to yeah you know, like, you'll never have to fight over the no. uh, but getting to more serious stuff the fuel economy uh, you might think that uh, this twin turbo V6 uh, gives you great fuel economy. Uh, the answer to that is going to be no, because it still has 450 horsepower. Um, so it comes in at 15 city, 18 highway, 16 combined, uh, which of course is not great. Um, but once again, you're getting a ton of power and an absolutely amazing driving experience. Um, so you are going to pay the price for that. But overall, to say the Raptor is impressive is really an understatement. Um, this truck, there's really just nothing like it still, even after all these years. No one has made anything really that can take this on head to head. And, and really what one of the best things about it is, and I think what has really made it so popular, is despite it being extremely capable, you don't have to trade off everyday livability. This is still 90% like a regular F-150, yeah. and you can live with this as a daily driver and be comfortable, because obviously every day does not involve driving over sand <laughs> dunes and going off-road, most days don't. And I think that's what has made this so popular is because it's really uncompromising in its experience. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and discuss the pricing for this 2020 F-150 Raptor. So you can get it in the Super Cab or Super Crew configuration. And if you want that short uh, Super Cab version, that's going to start at $53,205. If you want the Super Crew, which is what we have here, uh, the full four-door setup, that's $56,190. Now on top of that uh, base price, you do have pretty much three different uh, trim levels, but technically they're packages. Um, we have opted for the mid-range uh, version, which is the 801A group, um, and that's a $3,785 option. Uh, and then we do also have uh, some additional optional equipment on top of that. So we do have the tailgate step for $375, the twin panel moonroof for $1,495, remote start for $195, as well as the voice-activated uh, navigation system for $795, and then finally, when you end the destination charge of $1,595, uh, we have a total MSRP of $64,430, which I have to admit, I'm very impressed with this uh, particular 801A. Um, at $64,000, you can barely get, you know, maybe even a Platinum F-150. Most, I mean, honestly, they're more expensive than that. Um, and you're getting a really, really cool truck here uh, with a lot of added capability and also a pretty nice interior in here. I'm not really missing anything uh, out on most of the uh, super luxury versions. Well guys, we've enjoyed watching one of the first in-depth looks at the 2020 Ford F-150 Raptor. We really appreciate you watching and be sure to give us a thumbs up below if you enjoyed. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.